school uniforms. Pro is yes, and con is no way. We are going to be reading two articles about school uniforms. I'd like you to take your notebook paper and fold it in half hot dog style. Open it back up and divide it into two sections with a line down the middle. Your first heading should say pro, yes, uniforms. Your second heading should say con, no way, just as I have done in the picture. We're also going to write down the article title, which says, awesome. or awful. That's the title of the article I want you to write across underneath your headings. As we read this first article, School Uniforms, Awesome or Awful, I'd like you to follow along with me and I will be marking and highlighting as I read just as you will on your paper. Here's the title. School uniforms, awesome or awful? More and more schools are telling students what to wear by Lauren Tarshis. It was bad enough that Sam Gabicki had to learn the ropes at a brand new school. It was bad enough that she had to say goodbye to her old friends. But what really stressed her out? The uniform, says Sam, 12. When I first saw it, I couldn't believe it. At her new school, Sam would have to wear a white shirt a plaid jumper, black shoes, and a necktie. Yes, a necktie. She would wear this outfit every day, rain or shine. There would be no more jeans, no more t-shirts, no more leggings or crocs. I wanted to cry, she says. But is wearing a school uniform really something to shed tears over? Many experts insist that uniforms improve learning, make schools safer, and even help students feel happier. It's no wonder that the number of schools requiring uniforms is growing. Today, more than 18% of students in the U.S. wear uniforms. In the past, it was mostly private schools that required them. But more and more public schools are bringing on the jumpers and the blazers. In Cleveland, Boston, Chicago, and Miami, more than half of all public schools require uniforms. In New Orleans, kids at 95% of schools are decked out in them. Dress without stress. Many principals in high crime areas say uniforms can transform a school by making students and teachers safer. Troublemakers can't hide dangerous objects under baggy clothes. Fights don't break out over expensive jackets or fancy sneakers. And kids can't show up to class wearing gang colors or symbols. I'm going to pause right there and start looking back and highlighting some of the information that we heard. If I look back into the paragraph right here, I have some information. When I look back to this section, it says many experts insist that uniforms improve learning. I'm going to highlight that. Make schools safer. I'm going to highlight that. And even help students feel happier. I'm also going to highlight that. These are all for the pro side, so I'm going to put a big P right there next to there, as well as there. Do the same thing on your paper. It also says that today, more than 18% of students in the U.S. wear uniforms. I'm going to highlight that as well. That is also for the pro side, so I'm going to put a P there. When I look back over to this section over here, I can see that it says troublemakers can't hide dangerous objects under baggy clothes. This is under this, this heading, dress without stress, meaning that this is for the, the pro side of um, uniforms as well. Troublemakers can't hide dangerous objects under baggy clothes. Highlight that. Fights don't break out over expensive jackets or fancy sneakers and kids can't show up to class wearing gang colors or symbols. These are all for the pro side, showing that these 
people or these points are saying that uniforms are the best thing. Now if I look at my chart and I look in the pro column, I'm going to add some of those things. My first bullet comes straight from the text. It says that it improves learning. A bullet improves learning. My next bullet says it makes schools safer. I'm going to write that in here as well. Makes schools safer. It also says that it helps students feel happier. So students feel happier. Copy these down on your paper as well. In addition, it tells us the percent that there is more than 18% of students in the US that wear uniforms. So more than 18% of students in US wear them. In addition to those points, I also need to write down about how it makes it safer. So I'm going to put a bullet with safer and I'm going to make sure that I write how it makes it safer. One, they can't hide dangerous objects. Two, fights don't break out over expensive clothes. Three, And three, I'm still on my pro side, but I have to write three over here. Three, you can't wear gang symbols or colors. Let's continue reading at the bottom of this page and to the next page of this article. Even in quiet towns, uniforms are catching on. When all students wear the same thing, kids don't have to stress about having the latest brands. Why beg your parents for a pair of $150 Uggs if you can't wear them to school? Lost opportunities? Still, some experts believe uniforms have drawbacks. Schools often require families to buy the uniforms, which can be expensive. Some styles are unflattering to certain body types, which can add another challenge for kids already struggling with their self-image. There's also the fact that clothing can help us all, teens especially, express who we are. A Jay-Z fan or a Steelers fanatic, one of the crowd, or someone who dares to be different. Some schools do allow kids to spice up their uniform look with jewelry or hair accessories, but in general, options for creative expression are limited. Last, kids do, who don't have to choose clothes for school lose an opportunity to practice for later in life. Wearing the appropriate clothes for a job interview or college visit can be the difference between success and failure. Nevertheless, education experts are virtually united in their support of school uniforms. And after four years of wearing a uniform, Sam Gebecki agrees with them. I do miss being able to express myself through my clothes and seeing what my friends were seeing and what my friends were doing every day, she says. 
but it's nice to just get up and get dressed without worrying. So now let's take a look at some of the things that the author has written for both the pro and con side. Up here it says, kids don't have to stress about having the latest brands. I'm going to highlight that. And that is telling me that it is pro because they're saying that they don't have to worry about getting those name brand clothing. It also says schools often require families to buy the uniforms, which can be expensive. Well, guess what? That's actually saying the con side, that uniforms are expensive and that's not really fair to families. Some styles are unflattering to certain body types, which can add another challenge for kids already struggling with self-image. That's also a con. If you have a certain body style and the, the uniform doesn't actually show the shape of that or it actually kind of is hard to wear, then it's not fair to that person. It can also help express who we are. You don't have that chance to express your favorite color, your favorite design or uh, sports team if you have a uniform. But it also says that you can also spice up the uniform with jewelry or other hair accessories. So that's a pro because that's showing that even if you have the uniform on, you can actually add to it and use your own creativity there. But in general, the creative expression is limited. So that's a con. Down here in this section, it also mentions that you have to be able to know what type of outfit to wear. It says that if they don't have the opportunity to choose clothes for school, then they can't practice for choosing that later in life. That's also a con. You have to kind of know what type of outfit to wear for, for each different thing that you're going to be having, especially later in life with a job interview or if you're at a certain career. And then it also says at the bottom here that she actually likes to get dressed up without, without worrying about it in the morning. So that's a pro side. That's saying she actually likes the uniforms. So let's take a look at how to add this to our organizer. At the very top of the article, the author says that kids don't have to stress about having the latest brands. So you, on the pro side, don't stress over latest brands. Then on the con side, it says that it's expensive for families. So we're going to write that over here. Expensive for families. It also says that you can't express who you are. And it may be unflattering to some body, type, body types. So maybe unflattering to some body types. It does say that you can still add accessories with jewelry or hair ties. And I'm going to put that over here on the pro side. Can still add accessories. Because you can also be creative in that way. It still just limits your creativity. So less creative. Less creativity. You also can't practice choosing the appropriate clothing for later in life. So I'm going to write that over here. You can't practice 
choosing appropriate clothing for events later in life. And on the other side, on the pro side, you can get out up and dress without thinking about what you will wear. So not worry about what you will wear. Then I want you to draw a line after your final bullets across your page so you can get ready for the next article. Now underneath your heading and where you just finished your last bullet point and you drew a line like this, I want you to write the next article title which is called Fashion Police. This article is also going to focus on the pros and cons of having school uniforms. Let's start reading. Follow along as I read this article. Fashion Police. Should students have the right to wear what they want to school? Earlier this school year, 13-year-old Adrian Rocha was on his way to class when the assistant principal stopped him in the hall. Adrian was told he was violating school rules because of his hairstyle. Violating means breaking or going against. So he was going against the rules of the school. Adrian, a 7th grader at Durham Middle School in Louisville, Texas, had a faux hawk. That means he combed his hair from the sides into the center and used gel to form it into a peak. But at Adrian's school, faux hawks aren't allowed. Like many schools, Durham Middle School has a dress code. It bans hairstyles and clothing that school officials consider inappropriate or too distracting. Adrian was held out of class until he got a haircut. Adrian thinks the dress code is unfair. People should have their hairstyle however they want, he says. Fashion failures. Adrian and his classmates aren't the only kids with fewer style options these days. The number of public schools with strict dress codes is rising. Dyed hair, tank tops, and ripped jeans are among the fashion no-nos at many schools. Some schools forbid kids from wearing shirts that have any writing or symbols. Many students have no choice about what they wear. About 20% of public schools require kids to wear uniforms. Well, I see that this is very similar to the percentage that we had in the other article. So I don't need to write it again because it's so close. The um, statistics match each other. A school in New York City called Beginning with Children Charter School is one of them. Principal Dion Jagon says the switch to uniforms has helped reduce bullying and distractions. It took the focus off of clothing, she explains. We're here to learn. As I look back at this article, I see there are a couple of places where I could highlight. One place was right here where it says it reduces bullying and distractions. Well, that would be a pro. So I'm going to label that with a P. I also did see that there was 20%. I can highlight it. I'm not going to write it down, though, but I know that's a pro because that's what they're trying to, to prove is that many schools are starting to go this route of having uniforms. Let's take a look at our organizer and add these two to it. Underneath Fashion Police, you need to write the pro is it reduces bullying or lessens. Let's write lessens. Bullying, so it makes it less. Students aren't picking on each other for what they wear. It also reduces or takes away distractions. Some distractions. So some people aren't going to be worrying about what they're wearing compared to others because they actually are all wearing the same thing. Let's start at the bottom. Students' rights. Many students and parents say schools sometimes take dress codes too far. Jada Alston 
is a seventh grader at BWCCS. On Valentine's Day, she spent the day in the principal's office because she was wearing a shirt with a red heart on it instead of her uniform shirt. I come to school to learn, says Jada. It shouldn't matter what I'm wearing. Some critics of dress codes say they aren't just unfair, they're unconstitutional. This means it's against the Constitution. It's right down here. Not in agreement with the rules in the U.S. Constitution. The First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution protects your right to express yourself through art, music, the way you dress, and even how you wear your hair. In 1969, the U.S. Supreme Court weighed in on the dress code debate. It ruled that students have the right to wear what they want to a point. The court's ruling says that students have the right to express themselves as long as they don't disrupt class and aren't hurtful to others. In other words, your rights are balanced with your school's need to keep order. That means, for example, that your school can tell you not to wear a t-shirt with bad language on it. Express yourself. School officials say dress codes aren't meant to stop freedom of expression. Principal Jagum likes to remind students that clothing isn't the only way to show individuality. You can think of other ways to express yourself, she says. How well you communicate is true self-expression. So let's look at parts of this that we could add to our pro and con organizer. Saying that the dress codes are unconstitutional is definitely a con. It's against those school uniforms. But down here, it says that your rights are balanced with your school's need to keep order. That should be highlighted and as a, added as a pro. It's saying that your school can definitely um, enact different codes that they feel are necessary to help keep students safe and on track. That was actually what the court had ruled. Down here, it goes against the um, con where it says to express yourself. A principal says, oh, there are other ways to express yourself. So that is a pro. That is for school uniforms. Let's add these to our organizer. Let's add in con that it is unconstitutional. I have to put a hyphen here, but if you can fit it across the page, you should. Unconstitutional. It goes against your right You are right to express yourself. Add this to your organizer as well. It says that the court decided that the schools can tell you what you can and cannot wear. So schools decide... codes of dress based on student needs. So if they feel it's important, then they should they can enact the dress code. At the bottom it says that you can express yourself in other ways. That would be for yes for uniforms. Express that's a good argument for the one where it says it limits your ability to express yourself. Express yourself in other ways. The way you communicate is very important. 